I just told a really funny joke. Now, all right. Listen to me closely. We are going to... I need you to cast your minds back through the, sand, or through the mists of time to about grade three when Mrs. Bad Crumble taught you the word ratio. Now, back then, it was not the same as it is today. Mrs. Bad Crumble would have had a picture of something that wasn't the same as a picture of other things. So maybe she had a picture of a bunch of oranges and a picture of a bunch of apples or a picture of a bunch of fish hooks and a picture of a bunch of anchors or something like that. And Mrs. Bag Crumble said, Class, how many apples do you see? And you all looked at the picture of the apples and you went, One, two, three, seven, Mrs. Bag Crumble. And she said, Oh, good job, and gave you a gold star. And then she and you thought you were good at math. And then she said, Class, how many oranges do you see? And you went, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, Mrs. Bag Crumble. And she said, Excellent. And gave you yet another gold star. Because back then, when you people were in grade three, it was believed that if you were constantly told how brilliant you were, you would eventually believe you were brilliant and then be good at everything later on in life. Uh, yes, Eric. Why don't we get gold stars now? Because gold stars are for winners. Uh, winners get dinner. See, just winner, winner, chicken dinner. No, when I went to school, we too got gold stars, but not for counting to seven. We got gold stars for getting the final answer. Not for every little step along the way, which is a significant difference. I actually never got a gold star. So, Uh, no, you got something different. You had some other bribe that teachers gave you to be good. You had stickers or the chart on the wall. I know all these things because I have many friends that are elementary school teachers, and I hear them argue endlessly about what they're going to use to bribe you kids. Not you kids, but their kids. They call them incentive programs, but all it is is a bribe. So... Eh. Anyway, what you did with Mrs. Bag Crumble was you made a ratio. Then she said, class, how many apples are there compared to how many oranges are there? And you went seven to 14, Mrs. Bag Crumble. And she said, yes, well done. And she wrote it this way, seven to 14. Excellent. Now, Hopefully, at some point between then and now, you had another math teacher that discussed that ratios are actually what? Say it loud and proud, Ash. Fractions. Yes, they are. So, this ratio of BF to AF, how far is it from BF B to F? Three squares, Mrs. Bag Crumble. How far is it from A to F? Four squares, Mrs. Bag Crumble. So what is the ratio of BF to AF? Three to four. Now write that in three other ways, two other ways. One is what? Three over four as a fraction, three fourths. The first number in the ratio becomes the numerator of the fraction. Now write it in another way that means the same thing but looks totally different. What? 0.75. Well done, brother. Thank you, Mr. Bad Grumbo. I don't care. Now, (laughs) this for some reason is lost on many students. For some strange reason, as soon as we introduce decimals, everyone forgets that a decimal is just a fraction. Okay? And every fraction is a ratio. All right? So any time you see a decimal, it is the comparison of two numbers, just like a ratio. Is everybody cool with that? Awesome. All right. Now, you got to use your imagination a bit and follow along with me here. I'm going to make the line from F out to G, but I need you to recognize that we're really talking about all the way from A to G. Is everybody cool with that? Okay. And I need you to go from C to G. You don't need to draw it green. 
It's this. What? You have to draw, connect F to G and connect G to C. But remember that when we talk about it, we're really talking about all the way from A to G. Everybody okay with that? Okay. How far is it from A to G? 12. Excellent. 12. And how far is it from G to C? 9. Excellent. So what now is the ratio of CG to AG? 9 to 12. What is that as a fraction? 9 over 12, which is also 3 over 4, which is also 0.75. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. Now, take the finish this line off and go G to H and H all the way up to D. I don't know why the line stopped. Well, I do know why the line stopped, but we don't need to say that because you all already know. Now, what is this distance? 20. What is this distance? 15. Now, what is the ratio of DH to AH? Which is? Oops, I forgot to write it as a ratio first, dummy head. 15 to 20, which is? 15 over 20, which is? 3 over 4, which is? 0.75. Very interesting. Now, use, use your mathematical knowledge, what you have just proven with yourselves here, to tell me what if I carried this line all the way out to 40 this way. How far up would I need to go? 30. Why? I need to keep that same ratio. What if I went out 36? How far up would I need to go? Twenty-seven. What if I went out a hundred and sixty? How far up would I need to go? Mm -hmm. If I went this way, a hundred and sixty. How far up, Eric? One hundred and twenty. All right. Everybody cool with this? Remember, I haven't told you why. I haven't told you how you're going to use it. I just need you to be aware that this is creating a pattern, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Now, what is the only thing that is in, not the same as, but actually in all three triangles that we made. Um, you're close, Ash. The 0.75 is part of every triangle that we have. But what is the only actual thing that is physically in all three triangles? The red angle. This angle right down here, correct? Everybody with me? No matter how big I make this triangle, that little number, that little angle doesn't change, does it? But I can use that knowledge to tell, you can use that knowledge to tell me the other two sides all the way along, can't you? Because that angle never changed. Everybody with me? That is why trig works. 
I can draw a little tiny triangle that big and I can use it to measure the distance across a lake. I can use it to make that roof. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the point I'm trying to make here? That regardless of side length, the ratios stay the same if the angle does not change. Now, everybody cool? Yeah. Now watch. I'm going to draw a black line on here. That black line is 12, yes? Yes. But now I'm only going to go up three. The angle has now changed, which means the ratio has now changed. It's now three over 12, correct? Everyone cool with that? Or sorry, 12, yeah, three over 12. One fourth, yes? So what if I went out 24? How far up would I need to go? Six. And that would work for this little angle. What if I went out 400? How far would I go up? If I went out 400, how far would I go up? 100. Because 100 divided by 400 would give me this same fraction. Everybody cool? All right. This is what is called the tangent ratio. And it works for all. Please underline all a million times. Or highlight it. Or put a grade 5 cloud around it, which your teacher always did when something was important. I don't care. Do something to highlight that for yourselves. And it is true for all right angle triangles. Now you'll notice I mentioned earlier that your calculator does all the work in this class, yes? We're going to take a moment now to discuss that. Now everyone needs to pay very close attention to me because this is the actually the most frustrating day of trig because trig is my favorite part of the course. Yes, and making it work for students is a giant pain in the bottom. The first thing you must all do is look at your calculator. Everyone get your calculator out. If you have your phone, that is going to be a pain in your butt, and I told you to bring your calculator today. So if you have your phone, I'm going to be paying very little attention to you. Everybody look at your screen on your calculator. Do not look at the buttons. Look at the screen. The screen is the grayish rectangle thing. Somewhere on your screen, you need to see a letter D or the word, it's not a word, D-E-G. Is there anybody with an actual calculator that does not see a letter D or a DEG somewhere on the screen. What you will see instead, which I do not want you to see, is an R and rad or a G and grad. If you see either of those things, put your hand up. You are using your phone, are you not? I told you I wasn't going to speak to you if you were using your phone. Kingston, you piss me off. So figure it out. I've given you two weeks to figure out where, how I work. You seem to be the only one having problems with it. Out of 30. That's not a particularly good ratio. So sort it out. Okay? Good. Yours, yes, you're fine. You found it. 
good. That you're the person I needed to talk to about that. So everybody sees D or DEG? Now listen to me. If you ever pick up your calculator and it's been bumped around in your bag and you don't see D, you cannot do trig in grade 10. You will get all the wrong answers, even if you push the right buttons. So if you find your calculator does not show a D or a DEG, you need to push the button that has DRG on it until it says D or DEG. If you find your calculator shows you the R rad or G grad and you don't remember how to fix it or you don't have that button, you need to come and see me before you do anything that requires you to do trig. Do you understand? Or even if you push all the exact right buttons, you will always get the wrong answer. Okay? Okay. Now, here is the next thing that causes me a great deal of grief. If you have a calculator, and now phone people can listen in. If you have a calculator, right now, push clear so your screen shows either a blank gray screen or the number zero. Everybody has done so? Now push the button on your calculator that actually says TAN. If the word TAN shows up on your screen, you have what I call a forward calculator, which means you can enter questions exactly as you see them written. So if the word TAN shows up on your screen, I want you all to push TAN 35 equals and then stop. Is there anybody in the room that have a calculator that did not show the word TAN? All right. You have what I call the a backwards calculator. So you do the complete opposite order. You can't start with equals. So that, don't worry about it. You must go 35 TAN. And you will not need to hit equals. You will, your screen will fill up with numbers. What are those numbers to the first three decimal places? 0. 0.700. 0. Everybody understand? This is trigonometry. Really? If you didn't have a calculator, actually, that's a really interesting question, Kingston, because back in the day, calculators weren't sophisticated enough to do this. So you know what they did? This is actually funny. It goes to show how far things go. They had a sheet of paper that had decimal places on it from 0 to 90. And you had to find the decimal place with the angle you wanted. So you would have gone down the list till 35 and slid out, found the decimal, and you would have found it on the chart as 0.700. Then you would have had to do math with it. No. We had calculators that could do it. But my mom and your folks, when they were doing trig, if they're around... 55, well, no, your folks are my age, so they would have had the calculator. Your grand folks would have had to do trig with a chart like this. Yes, it was a giant pain in the rear. My mom, when I was first learning trig, she was like, uh, I didn't like trig. It required, oh, flipping pages, going to the back of the book, finding the tables. I'm like, tables? I work on a table, mom. No, you can't. And I said, mom, huh? Tan, 40. What will they think of next? <laughs> it was kind of like when you show your mom social media and you're tell talking to your friend in Australia as it's happening. I know, I know. Because your moms are my age. It doesn't work. But if you showed your grandma social media, she did that thing where she automatically started messaging you every single day. Just because she could. Everybody's like, I know, I never should have showed grandma how to Facebook. Anyways, okay, back to business. All of you now do that for 15 and 45. We, when we're doing the decimals, for whatever reason, almost every math person for trig ratios uses the first three. When I'm asking you to write it out like this, yeah, you disregard the rest. But when we do the work, we're going to use all of them. Um, are we supposed to round it up? 
That's just the whole conversation I just had with Ash, Louie. What is this one? Since this guy went to three decimal places, how long do you think you should go here? Three decimal places. What is it? Two, six, seven. Now, that means... Oh, it, it was a nine? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I, didn't, I don't do this work. I ask you guys to. So it should be 0.268. Okay. No, 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 no. You leave it there. Three decimal places. Everybody cool? All right. Now, if I were to draw this triangle, that is just a fraction, isn't it? That is technically 268 over 1,000, yes? which means the angle would look, which would be the up and down one? 268 or 1,000? The 268, and this would be the 1,000. Everybody cool? Exactly like what we did up above with three and four. Everybody's good? Great. What is the tan of 45? What? One. That seems weird. Why is everything else a decimal, but 45 isn't? Here's why. If that's 90 degrees and that's 45 degrees, then this has to be 45 as well, doesn't it? Yeah. If those two angles are the same, what do you know about these two sides? They're the same. So if this is 700, what's this got to be? 700. 700 divided by 700 is 1. Is everybody cool? Can everybody make their calculator do what it is supposed to do, even if you're using a phone? Because yeah. yes. most of the phones, all the phones... The calculators that come on your phone are all backwards calculators, unless you've downloaded an app on your phone that you didn't download. What kind of phone do you have? Interesting, because my LG G6 calculators, or my LG G4 calculator is backwards. So was the calculator that came with the, all the iPhones. Huh? I had to download a calculator that was for it. Anyway, great, no problem. <laughs> what will they think of next? <laughs> All right, now, smart people, smart people, smart people. The tan button found us the decimal, yes? Now, your calculator, if it knows that a triangle that goes out 1,000 and up 268, if it knows that, it must be able to tell us the angle as well, which is what we're about to do here. All right? Tan gives us the decimal. Shift tan negative 1 gives us the angle. How do we find tan negative 1? If you look closely on your calculator, you see it's written on the calculator right above the button. So that means we must use whatever our calculator has to shift up to those. Some calculators say second, some say S, some have a key that says shift, some have a key that says INV. It's up to you to find it, whatever your machine does. Otherwise, it's exactly the same thing. To find the tan, we push tan and then the angle, yes? So to find the angle, we're going to go shift tan. And instead of hitting the angle, we're going to hit the decimal. Equals. If I've got a backwards calculator, I must do this in reverse. I must go 0.75 shift tan. <laughs> equals. What do you get? What is it? 36.86, which is exactly right, but there's a weird thing here. Angles are not split up into decimals, like money. Angles are split up into minutes and seconds, which is a super pain. So rather than go through all that, when you are finding an angle, unless you are told otherwise, you round angles to the nearest whole number. So what is this really? 37. Now you guys are smart kids. 0.75, yes? That was the decimal. 
Look back to our original drawing. What was our original decimal? 0.75, which means how big is this, or this black angle here? Point seven five. So how big is the black angle? Thirty seven. Everybody with me? If we had any other any other decimal here, would our angle be thirty seven? No, because every angle will give you a different result, a different decimal. Now there's a small typo in B. That negative should not be there. It does matter. It makes a huge difference, actually. What is B? 51. And what is C? 68 degrees. Can everybody make their calculator find both the decimal and the angle? Everybody's got it? Pardon me? Yes, but not for you guys till grade 11. Okay. Um, I, what the negative tells you, Ash, and I'm not going to show you what it is, but we are dealing with 0 to 90, right? In the real world, there's 360 degrees, isn't there? And you can make an angle go anywhere inside that circle. And some of those will have negative tans, okay? Anything over here and down here will have a negative tangent. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is exactly like that, yes. So if you have a tangent of any value between 90 and 180, it's going to have a negative. Or between 180 and 360, it's going to have a negative. That's all. Don't worry about it. That's for next year. Son of a... All right. So, for you guys in grade 10, we only care about specific angles. And those specific angles are the acute ones. What does acute mean in math? No, in math. I know I'm cute, but thanks. No, no, no. I just heard him say it. So, we only care about the numbers, the angles that are between 0 and less than 90. All the math we are going to do in grade 10 is on angles between 0 and 90. Everybody cool? All right. Now, when we are making a ratio, we are comparing two things. Now, you guys are smart kids. When we made the drawing, we were comparing this side to this side, right? The vertical to the horizontal. Everyone agree? So if I drew the triangle again, and I just said it was just any old triangle, I'm going to call that A and that B. If I was doing tan on that triangle, what would the fraction be? A over B, because it would be the vertical one over the horizontal one, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem. What if I draw it this way? It's still A over B. Uh -huh. Why? Why is it the same thing? This is not vertical. This is obviously diagonal. So is this. So I can't say vertical and horizontal. What can I say that is better? Think of the words we've used in the last couple of days. No, just the last couple of days. Uh, what's excellent? It is opposite. The opposite. side and what do I compare it to what's that word for right beside in English in math well no because again over here it's not to the left no nope. 
adjacent side. That way, it doesn't matter how I twist the triangle around, you can always find the sides with which you are dealing. Does everybody understand? Yes. Uh, always, when I'm doing tangent, look across the triangle and then right beside. What is the one side of the triangle that we have not talked about at all? Hypotenuse. And hypotenuse will never have anything to do with tangent. Everybody cool? All right. So now let's see if we can really do this. Angle A is where on this triangle? It's the top one. Excellent. I want you to tell me what is tan A. Tan A, well, we know it's opposite over adjacent. But we can put some numbers in there, can't we? What number is opposite to A? 12. What number is adjacent? 5. So the tan of A is 12 over 5 right? Which is what as a decimal? Because our calculator doesn't like using fractions, does it? Calculator is more comfortable with decimals. So what is it? 2.4. Everybody cool? Everybody cool? Yeah. Great. Now, what happens when I go down to B? Does this rule change? No. 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 Tan B is still opposite over adjacent, but what has changed? Why? It is 5 over 12. Does our calculator like that? No, so what do we give it? What do we do there? What is it? 416 forever. So we're going to round it to 417. Everybody cool? All right, now, you have the decimals. Am I asking you for the decimals in C? No. What am I asking you for? Find the angles. How do I find the angles? You just did it three times. Shift 10. Excellent. So you tell me angle A is the shift 10... Of what? 2.4. And angle B is the shift tan of? 0.417. What are they? Uh, 67, 67 and? <laughs> 23. Is everybody cool? Yeah. Now, stop for a second. How did we get 2.4? We had to punch that in, didn't we? Right? So we had to punch in 12 divided by 5, and then we had to do some shift tan work with it, yes? Uh -huh. Your calculator, while it doesn't like fractions, can deal with them. Everybody follow along. If you have a forward calculator, punch this in right now. Clear your calculator. And hit these buttons. If you have a forward calculator, if you have backwards calculator, you just reverse it. Shift, tan, bracket, 12 divided by 5, bracket, equals. What does it give you? Gives you your 67. So you don't need to actually do this in two steps. You can just enter the fraction, but what must you remember? You must remember the brackets. Everybody with me? If you had a backwards calculator, you would have done bracket, 12 divided by 5, close brackets, shift, tan. And then you probably don't need to hit equals. Everybody cool? All right. Now, look at this question. There's one more thing you need to know to do effective trig. And it is this. Everybody draw a little circle and put a horizontal line through the middle of it. That's a Greek letter. That Greek letter is theta. Theta is the Greek letter that math folks have designated as meaning an angle. 
it's kind of like when I say, what's a variable? And you all go, X, immediately, right? Theta is the geometrical version of X. Whenever you're dealing with an angle, you call it theta until you know what its value is. Everybody cool? All right. So in this triangle, is there an angle that we are interested in? It's this one, because I say right there, find the missing thing. So I need that X, right? So since I'm interested in that angle, theta equals X, because the angle I want is X. We don't know what it is. What else do I know about this triangle? If I care about this angle, I must be starting from that point, yes? What is that compared to the angle? How would you describe where the 23 is if you... Opposite. opposite. So the opposite is 23, right? What would you say 15 is compared to our angle? The adjacent is 15. Now you say to yourself, self, I know something that uses O and A. It's tan. Tan theta equals O over A. All right. So tan of x equals 23 over 15. I need to find an angle. Shift tan or regular tan? Shift, Shift tan. Tell me what the angle is. That's trig. Technically, you now know everything you need to do, know to do trig. Remember when people told you it was hard? You know those dudes, and I know I'm being sexist, but 99% of the time it's dudes. You know those people that you see out in the street with the little laser beam and the telescope thing, and they're looking at some other dude way down the street holding up a metal pole? They're doing grade 10 trig. And they're being paid a bucket of money. It is called surveying. The math you need is grade 10 trig. No, because like I've said many times in the past, the world thinks that you need some sort of special training for everything. There's janitor courses now. I am not kidding. I don't make the rules. Anyways, they are using freaking laser beams. They are. Don't look at it. It'll burn your eye. Everybody cool? Now listen, you guys are smart kids. If something works once in math, how often will it work? All the time. Let's see. In this next triangle, is there an angle of which I am interested? What is it? F. And does it have a value? Yes. What is it? 15. 15. Lovely. Now, this means I am dealing with this as my starting point. So what would you call that when the red line shows up? When the red line shows up? Opposite equals X. And what would you call that? Adjacent equals 37. Hey. I know something that uses an angle, an opposite, and an adjacent. It's tan. Oh my God. Tan of what? 15. 15 equals what? X over 37. How do I find X? You guys already know how to do this. You're doing this on your test tomorrow. The number's on the bottom. Divided? Times. 37 times tan 15 equals x. What's the answer? I don't know. Hold on. I got it. 9.91. 9.9. That's fine. Everybody cool? Green. Is there an angle I care about in the third triangle? So theta is what? 
70. Once I know I'm dealing with that angle, I got to decide what's 14. Opposite equals 14. What's X? Adjacent equals X. If it works twice in math, how often will it work? Always. Tan of 70 equals 14 over X. Now the letters on the bottom. You guys are smart kids. When the number was on the bottom, we multiplied. This is the opposite situation. So I divide 14 divided by tan 70 equals. What's X there? Now, can you all do this? Yes. Great. Stretch break, talk break, two minutes, then you're coming back. Go. Well, then I guess we're done. Listen to me closely. Page 55. I know you do. When you finish your test tomorrow, you do page 55 tomorrow. What do you do tonight? You get ready for that test. One second. You have four minutes left in class. What would be a really good thing to do right now if you didn't know something for your test tomorrow? Ask, not necessarily me, but ask anyone. Okay? Aight? Aight.